Hi, welcome back to Mark's Basement Arcade. Today we're going to work on a Captain Fantastic again. I have the entire area underneath here, the play field. This is all cleaned. I went through all the relays, cleaned them all, readjusted them all. There was a couple that were kind of whacked out a little bit. They're all opening and closing perfectly. I put a new fuse um, block in here. There's a new one here. What I will be doing is we'll be rebuilding the chime box. Uh, rot it out. We got new bushings for it. You rebuild that so it's all nice. I also rebuilt the plunger. That is all nice and super shiny again. Look at that. I polished it up. Used some mother's metal polish on it. Put new springs in it. The spring was actually broke in two spots. Put a new spring on it. The end for it. This thing is nice now. I still got cleaning to do. As you can see, it's got 15 years of dust still on it. Anyways, going to the bottom of the play field. I have to go every, through every single one of these switches, adjust them. Some are like just twisted on an angle. Instead of being straight, like here's one that's twisted. If you can see it once it focuses in. But it's, instead of being flat, so you can see how it's twisted. It's got to be straight. Instead of riding on an angle, I gotta fix that. Um, I have a switch right here. As you can see, when I if a ball would roll over it, it never contacts that next switch. No contact. You get the first contact on the bottom. Nothing on the top. This should be touching the top. This is all bent up too. You can see it's all just twisted. I gotta straighten that up and get it down so when this comes up it actually touches it. So, And I gotta rebuild. I'm gonna go through we're gonna rebuild one flipper. I don't need to go through and do every single flipper with you. But this is probably the one we might be rebuilding. This is the one they sprayed in oil. It was rusted or stuck or something. I have a new coil for it. This one is soaked in oil. And it stinks. I do not want that oil smell in the game anymore. Plus, it's got oil in it. Electricity passes through it. Easier to catch fire. Um, I have to replace this fuse, as you can see. It's just rotted away. So I got a new fuse block I'm going to put on there. Um, like I said, go through every one of these. The bonus counter, bonus unit. I have to go through that too. It seems to be working good. Um, it's going through all the motions. I go through them all. It's dirty. I want to clean the contacts on that too. I looked up all the, the pop bumpers, they seem to be working. Um, I have new aprons for them right there. And then four flipper rebuild kits because there are four flippers on here. Here's one, two, three, and four. So we're going to be doing that. Let's go and work on the chime box first. That'll be the first thing and then we'll pull out a flipper. I don't know if it's going to be this one or not. It's probably not going to be this one. But this one, maybe I'll take that one out and we'll work on that one. This one, I got to sit there and get some alcohol and stuff like that and clean it. Plus, these are just some nasty, hacked up solder job. It's these mechanics, the technicians go out in the field and to fix these things and they just quick fix them as fast as they can. They don't care what they look like, they just want to get them working again. So you just do a real hack fast job on them, get them working, so they can get quarters pumping into them again. This is not going to be a quarter unit anymore. This is going to be a home unit. So I don't care about how fast it gets fixed. I just want it fixed correctly. I want it to be clean as possible. So I'll go through it and try to 
fix up some of these boogered up connections. This coil's been replaced already. This has been replaced with a wrong coil. This coil is wrong. It should be the 25500, 28 1000. This is a 26650. I think it's a 26600. This is for an older style EM game. I looked it up. I can't remember which one it was that popped up when I looked it up, but it will work in here, but it's wrong. So I have a brand new one right there I'll be putting on. And then another thing, we clean up the Jones plugs. You can see there's some corrosion. Clean those up. And these three, I'll plug right into there. And that's how the bottom half and the top half connect to each other. I got one reel rebuilt. I got three more to do. I'm just worried about player one right now. I want to get player one working, get all the bugs worked out of it, then I'll go to two, three, and four and rebuild them. But today we're going to work on chime box, working on these switches. I'll show you how I, I fix that one. We'll go through a flipper on how to rebuild it. And I'll show you how we clean these Jones plugs. So let's get to the next part of the video. All right, chime rebuild. This should be pretty straightforward and easy. I'll take these screws out. Just using a regular nut driver. Taking all the screws out. We're gonna do one at a time though. come up easy. But old pinball machines that have been around. Look at that. This has been whacked on there forever. This is the one that was I was having problems with too. It was sticking real bad. So these we'll just push these out. Actually I got this. I'm gonna pull these out. I think I'm gonna reuse these. The new ones don't have them in it but I'm guessing you reuse them since they new ones don't have them and these will just push right out they're here just so dry rotted these are the pins I took out at the center of them you just go right back in these are just so nasty and dry rotted I don't want to wreck the ones that are halfway good because you never know I might get another pinball machine someday that just needs one bushing or something like that and these aren't really that bad some of them are just rotted but you have to this one's kind of falling apart you have to buy the whole kit not just you know one or two here's the whole kit so you buy all of them or you don't buy any of them so this one is to spray up a little bit with window cleaner Rub it down. You. Wipe it off. Look at that. Shiny again. You clean the parts. Whoops. Clean the parts when you work on them. One, it just looks so much more impressive when you got the game apart and you, you show your buddy or you decide to sell it or whatever. You open it up and it's just clean. It just shows people that you, you take care of your stuff and you like it. So this really didn't need to be cleaned. If I was a technician coming out to service your machine, you know, like at a bar or a club or wherever this machine was, there's no way I would have cleaned this. I would have just put in a bushing in, threw it back in there, we'd be done. I'm going to put these, dump them all out on my play field. Alright. 
I'm just going to put it back in the same way since it's already got a divot in there for the, the thing smack into it 94,000 times or whatever it's been doing. These will just push right in. I guess I could use a little lubricant on them if I wanted to, but I really don't want to. There's one. Oh, those are the old ones. Let me put those on the side. Not like taking a old one out and putting on the old one back in. Let me get that in there. These are not fun to put in either. They don't like going back in. Because they're all nice new hard rubber. There we go. Look at that. That's rebuilt. If you want to call it rebuilt. But that's what rebuilt would be. I'm guessing these might be like isolators or something. Anyways, that's one. Look at that. It's already a big difference. <clears throat> Getting over a little cold. Well, not really a cold, more of a just sore throat. I think it's just from um, allergies. That's all I think it really is. My kids were sick. My wife was sick. But I never really got sick. There was a super flu going around. Loosen these up a little bit while it's going on. And it just might be because it's new, it's tighter. If I knew how to play music, I could have probably played a song. But it's, yeah, that can get tightened up. I'm guessing just because it's so um, tight, it's loose. Well, that just has a nasty rattle to it. All right, let's go to the next one. Enough with um, music lessons for today. Yeah, you're like, yeah, that ain't music. I don't know what that was, but that's not music. Did I mention I used to tour with Van Halen? I was Eddie Van Halen's backup. And you're laughing hysterically now, I bet. Uh, that one unscrews out. It's just been so jammed in there. I'm going to dust that off, too. Look at that. I'm guessing that one's bent up a little bit, yeah. There's plungers in here. They're actually coils with a um, a rod in them with a rubber end, and they fly up, and that's what gets your your points. Pull this out. Put it here. This bushing. As you can see, was shot. It doesn't have a head on anymore. Garbage. But the other one looks good. Well, no, this one's got a tear in it. This one's garbage. It's 7 o'clock p.m. Okay, everybody knows it's 7 o'clock p.m. My Coca-Cola clock is going off. I'm guessing one of these days I'm going to have to have a video about that clock so everybody can see it. All it is, it's, a, it's like an old Coke bottle. And the bottle splits in half. 
And when it says the time, half the bottle splits and goes up. And then there's a polar bear inside of it, I think drinking a Coke. And it plays that tune as the, the top comes up. And then when it gets to the top, the top goes down. And then the music stops. Does it every hour if there's enough light in the room, it will do it. Because you don't want that thing going off at night when it's dark. It might wake you up in the middle of the night and you'd be like, what is that? No, no, that's not that clock. I better you need to throw that clock out because that ain't waking me up every night. So yeah, you can turn it on and off. I just like it on. If I don't know what time it is, I just know what time it is now. I didn't know it was 7 o'clock. I only got 15 more minutes of doing this and I got to pick up my son. There we go, a nice another clean one. Just look at that. You can see how it's just been pounding on after all those years. Constant just drilling. These are hard to get in there. I might not do the flipper rebuild today because I have to pick up my son. But it will be on this video. I might have to do that tomorrow. As I mentioned tomorrow, I am going to Midwest Gaming Classic. And I'm going to play a bunch of pinballs. It's an event once a year. I think it's once a year in Milwaukee. Um, they got all different vendors there. All different kind of... Um, home games, arcade games, um, vendors like Stern will be there, I'm sure Spooky Pinball will be there, um, all the pinball vendors like Marco and um, Pinball Life and stuff like that. Whoops, I kicked my camera stand. That's my reminder Tell me I have to do something, but I can't see it. Okay, that looks good again. Put these sleeves in here. Look at that, all nice and pretty again. Like I said, I didn't have to clean these. It's just, you know, when you like popping a hood on your car, you know, there's nice, it's clean. There's not oil splatter all over it. It just shows, you know, People and you know yourself, you know, you take pride in your, in your what you own. Like this pinball machine before, this just was caked and caked in dust. I could you know easily just left it there, but I wanted it clean just because I knew it was there. It didn't affect how this game played or anything. That just I knew it was there. I know it was gross. I know. Oh, that just sounds nasty. Also, maybe these will break in a little bit or something. sound bad when I, as soon as I tighten it down, I just got sweat in my glasses, that drives me nuts, sorry. It's 
kind of sad these old pinball machines, they all had that same sound to them. I'm going to look into um, adding maybe a, a, some type of sound player on this thing. I just saw some guy did it to a Ghostbusters machine it was wild. Maybe I can take some clips from the um, album Elton John did and, and add it to this or maybe some quotes he did like when you lose the ball or the game's over maybe he said something funny at one time and I can have that play but these look pretty decent too but no oh, nope this one's good this one's rotted yeah like I said we will be replacing it anyways I'm only saving these as spares. Like I said, if I got one game where one's rotted out, I didn't have any spares before these, you know, the first time I ever rebuilt one of these. So if I got a game where one breaks, this one's kind of, that will be one of the last ditch ones. It isn't as bad as that middle one I took out where it was just rotted and uh, the top half was gone. And I don't think cleaning this affects the sound, but I'm guessing it might, just a bit, because it's clean now. And it doesn't; ha it can reverb or whatever you would say better. Water spray on there, jeez. My hand is filthy. It took me forever to vacuum this machine out too. I had when I um. What was it? I got my swinger. I bought this cool little vacuum attachment. I'll make a video about that too. Because you guys are probably like, well, how do you clean your machines? And I will make a video on how to clean your machines. That just sounds good to me. I would like to see it. So I don't know why you wouldn't. Or at least just get the basics, you know. How do you vacuum all that little stuff? You know, how do you get in there? How do you do it? How do you recommend? Remember, my recommendation might not be your recommendation, but it's what I do. Like I said, you know, I'm a novice. I'm learning as I go. I never rebuilt one of these before. This is my very first time. You're seeing it for the first time too. This one's just hard to get in there for some reason. Like I said, I've never done this before. And I know these, after a while, they just hurt your fingers. There we go. Beautiful. I'm glad these were good yet. These remind me of 22 shells. No, what's left over after you shoot them. That's what they remind me of. I should take this out. I bet you this right here is just full of crud. I have to take this whole assembly apart to get that out. It'll probably make it echo a little bit better too, I bet. I was at a pinball event today. Everybody tells me Gottlieb games. They have the best sounding chimes. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. I've never heard one before, but today I heard one. Gottlieb has the best sounding chimes. I don't know why. They kind of sound like this. I know a lot of pinball machine companies use the same parts like Chicago Coin. The, the kick ball kicker for the out, out ball that kicks the ball onto the play field. That um, is the exact same thing that was in my swinger. Exact same thing almost, except for the, um, the what do you call it? The, the hook that, that smacked the ball. That was slightly different. And you, if you've seen on my Twinkie video how I used a uh, parted out swinger to repair my Twinkie, my Chicago coin Twinkie. These are loose so.
they're loose. It's just got to be, you know, tight from them not moving around. So I imagine once that coil smacks it up from the bottom, it will sound better. That's what I got right now. Better than nothing, and they look new. Well, not new, but they don't look disgusting like my hands do. They don't look like that now. All right, we're done with that. We're gonna go to the flippers next. Or actually, I lied. I'm gonna turn it on and just make it make play some music. I gotta get over here and turn the switch on. As you can see, it lights up nice. There's the game going. So we got one player, one ball. Let's see what these chimes do. Yeah, I still got spur reels to clean. I thought I was done with that part. Always one thing to clean. I think it might be this number right here. It's not fully at zero. This is the contacts might not be disengaging, but this is not turning. Anyways, you did hear the chimes. I do got to clean one of the contacts back there because I could tell one wasn't doing it all the time, and then all of a sudden they did. All right, thanks again, and we're going to the flippers next. <laughs> 